What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Thomas Donahue. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take that cracked dash, any dash really, but specifically your E30 dash, and turn it into something that looks better, right? Mine looked horrible and it does look horrible right now. It's kind of in the background. But I'm gonna show you how to use plastic weld and some body filler and some texturizing spray and some spray paint and some clear and fingers crossed, we can take that dash that was once cracked and turn it into something that looks nice. So stay tuned and let's see if it worked. All right, guys, <clears throat> here's where we're at. We've got this toolbox, thank God. It now gives me a space to work. I'm gonna put a towel over the toolbox because there's gonna be a lot of dust. I don't want a bunch of dust. But what I wanna do is I'd like to get as much of this done this weekend. So today's Friday, I don't know exactly what the date is, but really this is the goal keep working, keep sanding, work on these ridges. I'm going to experiment, and it's right down there somewhere, is with plastic weld or plasti weld. I'm probably gonna try it maybe in one of these big cavities or something like that. If it works, great. If not, we'll move on to the next thing. I'm not sure what's gonna work, but I really wanna get this done, prepped, painted, all that kind of stuff. Also guys, I need to work on this and this needs to get done as quickly as possible. Hopefully one of my friends is coming over this weekend. I need to follow up with him to see if he has time to come over this weekend and we need to start cutting and trying to get this welded either this week uh, or next week. Hopefully no later than next week because I really wanna get everything put back together. All right, so let's start here. I've got the air compressor ready. We're gonna blow out as much of the the crack, get it all, oh yeah, see? Okay, all right, so that's aired out, and then we're gonna wipe it off. Let's do this. Let's use some CarPro Eraser. I really like CarPro Eraser. That's really the key, is just get it prepped. I think just prep like paint and everything else is really the key. Okay. This is where now I think I need like a roller cart or something like that. And maybe what we could do is this. Let's move this up and over some like that. That way we're not too close. All right, that makes more sense to me. Okay, I think I haven't done any of this stuff. All right. Wow, this is fascinating. I'm not sure it's gonna actually go in. Let's see. Cause it's gotta have something. Okay, there we go. Wow. Yeah, see, it almost turns into like a cement and then of course it's gonna harden. And I think that could be a possible solution to these cracks. Just what to do. So here I'm just putting it in sideways, applying some light to medium pressure and just really up getting that heat in there and trying to smush and spread it as much as possible. It's almost like a, like a batter or like a frosting. Think of it as like frosting. You're trying to like frost a cake. It's kind of like the consistency right now. So what I'm curious is, is this cools, is this going to prove a real repair, right? Because we need it to get in and harden because if we can't get it in and harden and stick, right? then the repair's not gonna hold. All right, let's see if we can do it this way and see if I don't screw up the, the focus. There's still a line right there. And we might even just use a little bit of body filler on that top of that line. And that little bit of body filler will help hide the line. But I think the plastic is, I, I don't know, I, I could be talking right out my rear end for all I know. But I feel like the plastic's gonna give us more 
permanent repair and one that kind of flexes and works with us. Right. I feel like you start to kind of learn the technique here. I'm just kind of melting and kind of dragging. I also would like to, if at all possible, smooth a lot of this out with the iron. That line was somewhat similar to that, so it's not bad. So, all right, let's transition to this other side. What's nice is we can really just put a lot of product in there, just kind of let it get started. And the stick actually goes pretty far. I was concerned when I got the kit, I was like, I don't know if this is going to be enough, but I think we will have enough. And when you turn it sideways, and I know I mentioned this before, um, especially with a big crack like this, you can really get it in there. You've got to be somewhat close. And then it's really hard, of course, for me to talk with a, a mask on. And I probably will finish the rest with a mask. But I'm not it's really not getting in my face and it's ventilated, which is good. But yeah, so I'm starting to kind of learn techniques and stuff and how to... Can you get your mask? No, you're okay right now. But there's like different like kind of shoveling techniques and... Mm -hmm. But yeah, sanding it down. Yeah, see, look at that. Oh, it's much cleaner. Yeah. So it's just trying to get in here. And I know you were considering different methods, so what is this? I'm sure you've this is plasti weld. Yep. So this is just straight plastic that we're melting into the cracks. Some spots, maybe what we'll do is we'll use some body filler, like not Bondo. I've got like better product than Bondo from the body shop, but mm -hmm. using just different products. And then you're going to spray paint the whole dash? Yeah. But before we spray paint it, we're going to put a texturizing spray on it. Because if I paint it over this, after we sanded it, I mean, it would be obvious. Now, this isn't bad if you go to flock the dash. If you're going to flock the dash, it doesn't matter, the texturizing piece. Would you even have to fill it if you're going to do that? Yes. You would? Okay. Yeah, because it's still going to move and stuff like that. All right, so we moved from time lapse because I really wanted to show everybody just a little bit more welding. And with these particular cracks, what I'll do is, is I just stick it in, in the, in the crack, and then just keep working it in there. And I won't just melt the, top portion and what I'll do is I'll get it melted and then I'll really kind of push it in there and really try to get it as deep into the dash or whatever it is that you're working on and then we'll come back to that in a second so I don't mess up my finger or something and then in here I'm just going to melt a teeny little section and same thing I'm just going to work it it's like I'm filling a taco or something you know and then with that taco, we're just stuffing that chicken or beef or whatever it is that you want to use, getting it really, really in there, right? Trying to get your money's worth, kind of like a, a stuffed taco, but for it to get stuffed, right, we've got to get it as deep into the shell as possible. 
this is where it gets a little bit difficult, is trying to smooth it out so that you don't have lots of globs. Because the globs could be really tricky to clean up. Kind of cut that out with a Dremel. And then we're going to have to reshape this to the best of our ability. But this raised section, this piece is higher than this piece. Might not be easy to see on camera. But yeah, my finger grabs there. And then there's a piece up here that's going to be really tricky. And then right over here as well. But I wanted you to see this. We're going to let that cool some more. And I'm going to go back. And I'm going to keep working on some other small pieces. So that there as well, that needs to get cut out here a little bit as well, but we're going to fill that in a little bit as well. I'm going to fill in here a little bit more. I think that's a little bit too deep still uh, for the body filler. So I'd like it if I just filled a little bit more, but we don't want this too high either. We'd rather fill it with a little bit of body filler than really try to melt down or sand down this plastic. It's easier to fill with some body filler than it is to sand and sand and sand over the plastic. All right, guys, I did a little bit of quick sanding real quick. You can see here, like, obviously that's flush, that's a gap, stuff like that. That Plasti Weld did a pretty decent job. I shouldn't say Plasti Weld, Plasti, Plastic welding, it's not plastic weld like the brand. All right, so let's cut this out. I think we're just working on creating like an indentation. Cut into the dash like that, but you got to, if you don't, I think we're gonna have some serious issues later on. Now this one here, my gosh. There's just cracks everywhere. You don't realize how bad it is until you take your dash off and you're just like, geez. I didn't realize it was that bad. But yeah, see how we're kind of creating a ridge. I think the ridge is gonna be really important. Don't know 100% what I'm doing. I'm just experimenting. I'm taking you guys along for the journey. All right, before we move any closer, let's clean it down. I love this stuff. I use it on everything, man, like the stove, countertops, windows. Windows, right? Imagine that. Window cleaner for the windows. But it seems to work really good on everything, so I highly recommend it. All right, good. So now I have an idea what we're working with. We're going to weld, plastic weld. Not, yeah, we'll plastic weld in there a little bit. We're gonna plastic weld in here. And we're gonna plastic weld in there and then we're gonna work on body filler. up any of the plastic right so anything like that's going to be an issue with sanding or get in the way of uh, the whole body filler process needs to be sanded down because if we don't sand it down and then we put body filler on it we're never gonna we're never gonna smooth it out
All right, let's get some body filler on this sucker. And then we're not gonna sand it down today. We're just gonna let it cure for 12 plus hours. Ooh, that's got a scent to it. Mix as much as we can, as quickly as we can, apply as quickly as we can. You get the drill. Let's just get it onto the dashboard. All right, let's go to the offending spots. This might take a few coats on my part. It goes so quick and it dries very quick. Here's what we got done yesterday. Everything looks pretty clean. All I've got to do is flatten out these spot welds and then I've got to get rid of some of that metal there because this piece here lays on top of here, right? So you can see, actually not this piece, this piece right there, right? So you can see how it kind of cuts out, right? So it almost looks like a razor blade, right? Like an Irwin razor blade. That's all going to be cut out, cut out, and you can see where they use the brass. Ugh. So I've got to pop these spot welds, get all that cut out, get this separated, right? And you can see where it's attached there, so that's going to get separated all under there. And then once I get that ready, we'll cut later. We're not going to cut right now. All right, so we're back. This is actually here coming out not too bad. We're actually smoothing out that corner. And then if I can get this to rotate and then we'll get it to turn. Perhaps I'll zoom in. Even here, like that's actually got like a curve to it. So we're getting really close. I just need to let this dry some. You saw it right. I'm definitely using a polisher. Here's nice and smooth for the most part here because of some of that plastic weld. Uh, just because I haven't, I haven't done a perfect job and it means I'm probably gonna have to actually rebondo this and smooth it out this way, kind of like I did here. So just gotta work the edges here. I'm gonna reapply here. But I think what I need to do is not focus so much here and then just spread out. All right, so again, we're in a whole new world, right? So I've got everything for the most part prepped, right? With all the body filler, stuff like that. I didn't want to film like the last tedious, annoying parts of getting it prepped because it's boring. But what, here's what I need to do. This is gonna get a an adhesion promoter. Now on top of the 
Fondo or the body filler, I probably need to apply some primer, right? To kind of smooth things out. So I may apply a thin layer of primer just kind of everywhere. But the big thing is, the big thing that I want to know is, is this going to work specifically what I've done thus far? Does it give me enough of a result to move forward? If not, then I need to go backwards. If it's good or at a good spot, then I can move forward. It's been warming up. All right, good, still works. And let's just, let's just coat, coat away. I would probably say wear a mask. Even though there's good ventilation, I can still smell it. But I did pick up some Duplicolor. I actually have Sim brand, but I'm actually curious just to use this as a primer of sorts, kind of like that base coat. So let's just see. on and then we'll put on our texturizing spray we'll see how that texturizing spray works and hopefully this texturizing spray will cover some of these imperfections right that's real smooth that's textured I don't know if I'm gonna need to sand I don't know what I need to do and that's the beauty of again experimentation here There, I've worked that line and worked that line so much and I just, I can't get it perfect. I just truly cannot get it perfect. Now, if we were flocking the dash, it wouldn't matter. Just flock it and be done with it. This here is probably three feet, which means there's about almost a foot and a half or so to the dashboard. So we're going to go a little bit higher. We're just going to... So it's light coat, so we're gonna do much lighter. What we might need to do is, because it's hard to spray like this, it really needs to kind of go down like this, I think, or spray like this and let it fall, and we don't wanna spray straight on like that. I think that's gonna cause some difficulties. We're gonna pause here, let that dry, come back, do it again. I'm just kind of going like that. Just letting it fall down the best that I can. There's definitely some spots we want to get a little bit better, a little more coverage. to see the texture on there we're just about to the point of being able to kind of hide these cracks yeah we're getting real close and I think it's only gonna take a time or two there's some spots in here like I'm purposely leaving because I want people to know that this was an imperfect dash from the beginning I never wanted it to be a hundred percent perfect because eventually I'll probably put something in that is more perfect, but I just want people to know this was a cracked dash. All right, so I've been applying paint and I'm not trying to bore all of you. Your time is important and I'm not trying to just show you paint and paint and paint and paint, but that's what I'm working on now. It's just getting the last bits of the paint put on. And I'm using the Sim 
satin black paint. Paint, move on. All right, so I'm gonna keep painting, we'll come back, and then what's gonna be next is, uh, we're gonna throw some clear on this. Yeah, there were two enormous cracks right there. Can't see them. So if that gives you an idea, that I was gonna refinish a little bit more. But even then, that's not bad. Not bad in the least. And there were some cracks here. There were two huge cracks. And you'll probably remember seeing those just in the prep process. Guys, this isn't too bad. Now, that's what the product is. The biggest part I'm struggling with is occasionally getting some of these splatters. The splatters are kind of annoying. Not sure what's up with that. But I think what we'll do is we'll put this out in the sun a little bit. Could be something to do with that. 100% unaware as to why. But guys, looking better. All right, let's clear this damn thing. I'm ready, I'm done. Get it done, yeah. If my stuff doesn't fall apart. Okay. Let's, let's start just somewhere on the side here. Just see how everything sprays. Okay. It sprays all right. No, let's... I have two cans of clear, so we should have enough product. Let's come back up here. Now this is the same product that I used on the door card, or the, like the arm poles on my M3. So I know for a fact it's not too hard in terms of like too rigid. It should flex and it doesn't have too much sheen. Because right on a dash we can't have too much sheen. That wouldn't make any sense. We end up blinding ourselves. There's a hair right there. I'm going to see what we can do about this. But everyone's got a hair on their dash. If we have a hair on their dash, I guess we have a hair on their dash. It is what it is. The big thing here is we're going to have to make sure we get good coverage, that there's equal coverage of clear on everything, and that we don't run into issues of something not having clear on it and being exposed texture because that'll creep up later and make life a little bit difficult just a little bit we got to be kind of thorough about this And then we'll let this sit like 10, 15 minutes, something like that. I'm going to try to get some tweezers or something for that. Man. That's tricky. All right, let's, let's let this sit. Like I said, we've got two cans of this clear. See how it goes. Oh my gosh, this is really heavy. Uh, it's Sunday night and I want this video to go out Monday. This will be two weeks since I posted and I know some of you aren't happy, my bad. Um, the dash is done. Now what I wanna do is I wanna be transparent, right? There are a couple things here. There are a couple lines here that didn't go as planned, like these teeny little cracks that kind of formed after putting on this like textured material. What I did was went back and used like some super glue and baking soda Maybe I could have done that from the start. I'm not super worried, like I said, about how perfect it looks. I really wanted it just to be done. So I put a bunch of coats on here, uh, a clear coat. I don't know if I can sand this down or if I should sand it down. I don't know. Um, but the texture is not going to come off, 
right? So as long as you've clear coated it well enough, the texture's not gonna come off. This is a big project, guys. By the time you take the dash out, prep this, put it back, I would say you're 50, 60 hours into this. So if it's something you're considering and you've got 50 or 60 hours, go for it. If you don't, maybe don't do this project. Uh, this project might make you pull your hair out, might bring in some uh, gray hair. Um, but overall, it wasn't too bad. So what do you think? I think we can determine that once we have the dash back in. <laughs> That's the PhD in I mean, here. I'm looking at this and I'm like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put this back down and then what I want to do is come over here. Okay. And we'll give everybody a quick sneak peek right here. <gasps> So that is now the new piece reinstalled and I'm already on the um, sanding down of the welds process. So sneak peek, look for that video soon. So I'm running two projects at once? Yes, so look for that, look for that video soon. I hope you guys like this video and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks, bye. Bye.